This episode of Says Who is brought to you by you. Yeah, you. You. You listening right now because you maybe, I guess there are a lot of you that are listening right now that are just kind of freeloading on this, but those of you that don't, those of you that support Says Who at patreon.com slash says who, where every Sunday you get this all over again, most every Sunday, spoiler alert, not this Sunday. Uh, you get this all over again. You get me and Maureen doing a little thing we call the town watch for folks that give at the five or ten dollar a month level. That ten dollar a month level also gets you a sticker in the mail every month uh, because you become a member of the Says Who Sticker Club. Tomorrow, Wednesday, I will be driving to Longmont, Colorado to pick up the the March stickers, which I have traveled across uh, a thousand miles with a bunch of stem there's there. There she is. <laughs> there she is. Uh, it's okay, Spotty. I drove a thousand miles with a bunch of stamped envelopes, so all I have to do is put the stickers in them. And that will happen tomorrow. And that is if you give it the ten dollar a month level, you get that kind of you get that kind of effort from me. Because you become a member of the Says Who Sticker Club. All of this is yours at patreon.com slash says who. I would drive 1,000 miles and I would drive 1,000 more just to pick up stickers for the Patreon at the Patreon Says Who Store. Ba-da-da-ba. 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 I saw Dune over the weekend, so was, that they, you know, they have those people on that the one planet. They go hum rum 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 rum. You see no, Dune, no. they go hum rum rum rum. I thought the Pretenders were in Dune. I thought that's what you were, where you were going with. Hum dum dum dum. So we're just in the middle. The Pretenders start performing. I would like the Mongolian throat singing version of Five Hundred Miles. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part of Dune. <laughs> Is when the Pretenders play. Uh, books. Yeah. Dan, that was things it? are coming. Things are coming to the. I, I can hear. I can say this. If you've okay. ordered, if you're in the United States and you've ordered Death at Morning House, doesn't matter yeah. from where, any literally oh, anywhere. Okay. okay. Save your receipt. Oh, all right. Save your receipt. Uh, because you will be eligible to get a special little snoocher, a little something, something that's not been announced yet. But that little pre-order present, anyone in the U.S., doesn't matter where you order from, like if you save your receipt, you're eligible to get the, you know, the little gift. So I'm just saying if anyone wow. has, if any of you good people and some of you naughty people have uh, pre-ordered <laughs> it. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. Okay. I've had a really weird data and I, I told you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that. I mean, Maureen came I, in hot. I came in very hot. You came in hotter than was I've that about ever the, seen. Was it about the hottest thing? Yeah, that was like a that was like a Star Trek like hey, she's gonna blow Captain kind of <laughs> level of hot <laughs> for sure. Uh, well, that's handy about the whole thing about saving your receipt if you've ordered Death at Morning House if you've bought it anywhere at least in, within the United States because that means you could go right now over to kickbezosintheballs.org where there is a simple, easy, clickable picture of the very beautiful cover of Death at Morning House. That is our own little bookshop and you could just order it, pre-order it, I mean, there. Boom, you could do that. And if you're ordering books on the internet, I just bought a book today, Maureen. I'm very excited about it called There's Always This Year by Hanif Abdurraqib, who is such a good writer. It is absolutely fucking crazy how good a writer he is. And I'm very excited about his brand new book that came out today. So why don't you go ahead and order yourself that too? Boom. Kick Bezos in the balls.org. And hey, while you're buying things on the internet, you go to go to merch.sayswhopodcast.com where we have a bunch of Says Who merchandise. You could go to shop.dansinker.com where I sell three patches. Three patches. Three patch Dan. That's me. <sighs> Dan. Yes. I'm doing good. So you sound great. You sound rested and ready. Dan, there's a lot 
There's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Do you ever just feel everything kind of come together in a point in your head where, oh, you know, I just got relaxed though because I see a little spotty in the background. Oh yeah, look at because that. Because in my in my camera view, she is about. She looks like a, like a bad, like it's been photo. She's she's about three millimeters high. It's very weird perspective. So it definitely looks like a weird Instagram sticker that's been put in the background, but made totally. really super tiny. You guys, everything's fine, and not only fine, it's great. I feel. <laughs> I came in hot. I'm not going to lie. What did it bit. sound like when I came in? I wish that I had recorded it because Maureen uh, joined the little video before she had hooked anything up. And then it was just a litany of profanity for a good three <laughs> minutes as you tried to find everything. At one point you were like, what the fuck is even happening back here? It's so <laughs> dusty. God damn it. And then you're like shuffling around and then your headphones weren't working. You were like, why the fuck aren't these working? Yeah. <laughs> you came in hot. You came wanna, in real then, hot. I have to, I'll explain why, but I have to be upstairs in my parents' room, which is where my, the computer desk is. And I need to show you the madness that is this computer desk. That was a real, was uh, to... that was a real, that was a real flashback to like 1998, that it, uh, computer desk. It's a giant hutch desk. So mm -hmm. it's a solid wood hutch, but it's crammed full of uh, like 9,000 folders and like definitely stuff that doesn't ex like, what is this even for? Where did these things come from? What is this? What are these? What are these? What are these rolls of Panasonic correction tape for a KR R30? <laughs> That's handy. Is that a typewriter? I think it's either a typewriter or it's like a, a it's like a dot matrix printer. Yeah, it's it, it's just stuff. It's handy that that's so quick and easily accessible. I have a question for you, Maureen Johnson. What? Should we start the says who podcast? There are so many post-its on the edges of this computer monitor that it looks like a butterfly that could flap its wings and take off at any second. It is bananas. I'm just, <laughs> just thinking that since we went to all of this effort, perhaps we should start the podcast. I, my desk at home is glass. I Windex it every night at the end of the night and it has nothing on it. <laughs> it's like an operating table, Dan. <laughs> Let's start the show. I'm very, very vulnerable right now. Welcome. Wow. Welcome. It says who? The podcast that isn't a podcast. It's a coping strategy. <laughs> Ray Johnson. And I am Dan Sinker. We are both coming in from, from elsewhere. Family houses. I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm in Janice's sister's house, um, and you are at your parents' house. Always Dan, a, always a a, a, a haven, a, a, a moment of respite, of calm and relaxation for you. Going okay. back to the old familial home where you can catch your breath and remember who you are. I mean. I sure as shit remember who I am. <laughs> I mean, that's that's definitely happening. Dan, I'm going to just don't worry if I'm going to mention this, you guys. But if this subject affects you, I'm not going to go into detail. So don't worry. There's nothing. I'm going to say the words domestic violence and that's it. We have a friend that's going through a situation like that and we're helping her out and it's reaching a yeah. real fever pitch right now. Uh, and I just want to say that the cops have been pretty fucking useless. Um, but Weird. one of the things I, I brought with me is entire, I ran to Best Buy yesterday and bought a bag of security system, which I'm going to go over later and install, uh, we'll have an electrician come and yeah. hardwire the bits that need hardwiring. And then I'll just do the, you know, I'll put the sensors up. I'll, I'll load the app. I'll, I'll teach her how to use it and all of that, but Holy it's a community cow. effort. And it's been, it's been a, like, I'm not going through it. She is, but like, it's a team effort. That's what's important is that these things are team efforts that everybody yeah. gets involved and helps because that's the only way it happens. Yeah. I mean, it's just, 
There's no yep. other. I, I, my, I'm not going to get into the, the. I shouted on Twitter a little bit last night about this. I was like, and then I yep. erased it because it wasn't useful. But um, I'm a little bit full of rage about that. Okay. Um, I think that I think that I think what the doctor ordered you should maybe think about taking a nice warm shower, just calming down in some nice hot right. water. Uh huh. So calming down, feeling the thirty minutes. Nice, oh yeah, right. Yeah, thirty minutes before I arrived here, I get a call from my mom. It's like the hot water heater overheated, and the whole thing just shut down, mm. and it, there was some major malfunction. So part of the reason I'm upstairs in my parents' house is that the downstairs, there's a crew doing emergency repairs downstairs. Perfect. So I came into some real chaos and some other family stuff that I'm not going to get into, but let's just and by put it in, at, You mean you arrived about an hour ago, right? Not even, yeah. Or maybe, yeah. And I, I came in pretty hot. There was, it, we came, I came in in medias res, as we would say, like <laughs> in the middle of the action. <laughs> and... um Everything has been like phones ringing and people doing stuff. And it's just been, I came up here dragging a pile of equipment, like everything. I had to open up the suitcases in the kitchen floor and just start clawing things out. And then I came up to this desk of just 1995 madness that is this desk and tried to find places to plug in my stuff. And this is a clean house. But for some mm -hmm. reason, they're like, what if, just hear us out. What if we keep an incredibly clean house, but have all the dust that would be in the house on top of all the power strips that control all this weird oh, shit yeah. of this computer? Like, what if we really pile it in there? Yeah. The other day I when I got sounds, stressed out, great. man. Yeah. I got stressed out about this stuff over the weekend. And my response uh -huh. was to grab the vacuum and go into the bedroom and deep clean that shit took care of business You're, it was magical oscar went in the other room and he came back when he heard me like help help because i was stuck under the bed frame because i had been trying to turn the bed on itself <laughs> i had removed the mattress oh, and good. like the platform and i was trying to flip the frame but the frame uh -huh. was super heavy and i got stuck under it yeah so i flipped it and i i vacuumed Perfect. everything i mapped all the baseboards into like the as much as i can into the heating which is probably full of yeah. nightmares and rats and stuff, but you can't get in there. Um, yeah. I filled the canister on that canister vacuum three and a half times. Wow. There was no crevice I didn't get to, Dan. <laughs> Every crevice. Well, there you go. <laughs> there's Every no dust crevice. in that bedroom. And there's no dust in there anymore, Dan. I found it. Wherever it was trying well, to hide, job. I found it. That's it excellent. really buried itself you... under the bed, but I was like, no more. Yeah. That carpet's getting vacuumed. So is there anything better than vacuuming when you just need? I love it. Okay. I love vacuuming. It's I'm a machine that you. sucks up trouble and you can watch it sucking <laughs> up trouble. <laughs> and then you take the I trouble like, um, and you ditch it. Yeah, I like the ditching part. I like oh, uh, I like a, a modern vacuum that has sort of the, we have one of those, like it's a little handheld dude, but then you mm -hmm. can attach it to like a long pole with a roller. So it works just like a regular vacuum. And the handheld dude has basically like an ejector button that you hit and then poof, everything shoots out the bottom. I do like that part a lot. There are basically two types of TikToks I watch. One is this guy who reacts mm -hmm. to cooking videos called Chef Reactions, yeah. who is absolutely one of my favorites. Okay. People make some shit. Like people, are, this woman yesterday made mac and cheese using an entire barrel jug of cheese puffs as the sauce. Like she boiled them in water and Whoa. turned them to sludge. Oh, so he rea oh, he's a oh. chef that reacts to all of this. Yeah. Like people that make nachos in a fish tank and yeah. ramen in a bathtub and all this shit. The second is cleaning. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People you've, that are you've, like, uh, oh. you've spoken of your love of cleaning videos before. I'm just like, oh, just one more. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm like, ooh, where can I get one of those? I felt A very proud of myself for in the middle of the night last night, Maureen, because we are um, we're staying at Janice's sister's house, and it's a it's a nice house, small but nice. And uh, Spotty is here, as you saw. Spotty, who pretty much all last year 
had a urinary tract infection and just was falling apart entirely. I'm happy to say that she is she's having a better year on that on that tip. But um, I still feel like I have a bit of PTSD from last year's travels with her where she was just pissing everywhere and all of that. And uh, like we have we have now made it so she doesn't go on our couch and stuff like that, because last year there was just too many times where she pissed the couch and um, and she will occasionally. Does your dog have dew claws? Yes. Yeah. So dew claws, for those of you that don't know, they are like weird vestigial limb claws claws that dogs have that are like partway up their leg they they play no purpose other than to be a real pain in the ass get stuck on stuff yeah our old dog she would rip them often Mm. and you know and then you'd have to get them wrapped spotty never rips them but she has this superpower where they grow in perfect circles almost instantly and so you have to keep trimming them because they will just grow right into a loop into her skin, right? Mm. And when it begins to do that, she will start licking sort of incessantly because you think imagine imagine a sharp thing pressing into your, you know, yeah. your leg constantly. So um so she's we didn't think to check her dew claw before we left. Because we only clipped it like a month ago, Maureen. And uh and then Yesterday, we realized she was up on the couch and she was licking her leg and she left the big wet spot on the leg. So thing one, I went to the hardware store, bought a pair of wire clippers, which is how I clip a dew claw, Maureen. <laughs> and uh, we got them shits clipped instantly. But we still needed a way to keep her off the couch. Now, mm-hmm. at our house, I felt really proud of myself when I came up with this system. I went to the dollar store and bought a bunch of baskets. And so that if you want to be on the couch, you can just stack them all onto each other and slip them right under the couch, right? But then you can cover the couch and she doesn't jump up there. So I was like, I need something to cover the couch. And But I don't know what. And then in the middle of the night last night, because of course she ended up on the couch again. I was like, God damn it. So I'm like walking around this house trying to figure out what can I find? What can I use? Maureen, I am going to attempt to move this, which is going to be hairy, I think, because I want to show you my system. Do you see the couch? Can you make that out? Yeah. It's got things on it. Yes. What are those? Janice's sister is an avid tennis player, Maureen. And I found in the middle of the night her bucket of tennis ball tubes. And so I just grabbed like a half dozen tennis ball tubes and (laughs) stood them up on the couch. And it worked a charm. So now there are tennis ball tubes on the couch. There are tennis ball tubes on the little one's bed. Taking care of business over here. She's she's like, what the shit is that? Yeah. She's like, come on now. What's with these tubes? We got a good thing going. Why are we doing this? But yeah. So now she's just happily gone walking into the bed that she's allowed to lick on. Oh, girly. Yeah, Dexter's very happy to be down here. As soon as I've done this, I'll take her for a big, long walk. Yeah, I got something exciting tonight, Dan. What is that? I'm part of a new organization called Authors Against Book Bans. Well, that's awesome. Uh, and along with Maris Kreitzman, I'm the head of the New York, Connecticut chapter. Damn. And um, it's just started, but we have a lot of work to do. And we had some issue that came up this morning that I wasn't able to talk on the phone about because we, I was in the car, but it's, it's, I was already popping off, even though we just got the jobs. Uh, but I have a training tonight about how to monitor uh, school board elections. Wow. With someone who that's like, what, this is what they do. So yeah. I'm really excited to take this training tonight. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, it's cool stuff. I got a bunch of cool trainings on monitoring school board elections and monitoring the state of book banning. And it's, um, Taking some action, Dan. It's good to have something to do. It's good because it definitely, it it seems like you've had a lot of free time, a lot of idle moments. So I'm glad that you've found something finally. Dan, wouldn't you rather have a a way to be purposeful? Oh, no, definitely. Blind rage. Also, also 15 job, man. Don't you dare. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you very dare. a lot of jobs. Uh, the funniest thing that happened on this trip so far is um, this podcast that I'm working on with Akila. There's like a little side quest um, about a high school in Denver. And we are in Denver right now. 
And as we pulled into Janice's sister's house, I was like, I wonder where that high school is in relation to here. It is a, like a mile and a half away. What, so, what, can you say what high school it is? Uh, Denver South High School. Okay. And uh, so I, uh, I went over there this morning and walked around. They were on spring break. So it's a very beautiful high school, actually. It was like built in the 20s. It's gorgeous. Has, Every, big, has big gargoyles on the roof. It's beautiful. I mean, well, my friend, my agent friend, Kate, was having a baby. She was yeah. in this, she, she got, she was, she was in labor for so long that she, she had, she was watching through all these TV shows. She yeah. started to reply to work emails in labor. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm just so bored. They gave yeah. her the pregnazone three times. Oh, wow. Is it the pregnazone or is it the, the thing nah, to stimulate? Yeah, let's go with it. it. It's something like that. Yeah. And it's, they gave it to her three times. The first two did nothing. So she's, she's, you know, watching shows and answering emails and eating snacks. She's like, yeah, I've been in labor this whole time. But the view, she's in this room that's like huge. Cause she sent me a picture, huge, huge room view of the mountains outside. Like, wow. like, a, like a hotel down, like a yeah. beautiful hotel. They have some nice hospitals around here. It's because everything um, was built like three minutes ago. They have a lot of big box stores. Yeah, I will say it's, that. Like, it's yeah. There's some very beautiful old buildings, and then there's just the 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 speed with which this area has grown means that that like it is just like big box stores. Every big box store you can possibly imagine, and and a lot of. Uh, like McMansion developments and some very nice hospitals because they keep building them every like three seconds. And if you miss the store, don't worry, drive five more miles and the whole series of stores oh, will be repeated. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. Uh, the first time I went out there, I was very, I didn't know I was in how anemic I was. Okay. And I wasn't, and I also wasn't aware of what altitude did. Oh, and I yeah. started, I started kind of walking sideways like a crab a little bit. Yeah. I was like, whoa, 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 and then I slept for 14 hours. Yeah, out, the altitude will fuck you, as will as will the the dryness. My main problem when I'm here, especially in the first few days, is like I'm just constantly drinking water. Yeah, and, which that's means like the whole secret. Yeah, which water means also plane. that I am constantly peeing. Like right. just, I am always in a constant state of either peeing or needing to pee. There is no, there is no cruise. It's like, right. there is no cruise in between that. There is purely those two states of life. Well, Dan, I feel like this week we're bringing a, we're bringing a, a new big energy. We're about are to we? go. This is the end of March. It sure is the end of March. We are now tumbling happened. Like blah, 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 into April, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, like we that. We sure are just like that. Uh, this morning we woke to the strange and horrific news that a that a huge cargo ship hit a bridge in Baltimore. Yeah, which then collapsed. That shit collapsed like fully like and completely. It's horrific. Also, I just want to. I just was like. So two things I really was like, don't worry about these two things. It's not like the door's gonna blow off the airplane or like something's gonna hit the bridge yeah. and it's gonna fall down. True. It turns out like that th those things do happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should feel better knowing that it can happen and that it has. Yeah. Or I have I have a lot of flights coming up, Dan. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I have I did change airlines because I was like, ooh, if I don't if I fly Virgin, I don't have to fly in a Boeing. <laughs> Oh, wow. I could fly on an Airbus. They're all Airbuses. Gonna, yeah, I think I'm going to go on the Airbus. Yeah. Does that sound crazy? <laughs> no, I mean, if you can do it. The, the it, trick was, is it was easier. Virgin was flies easier. like four places, but if you're going to those four places, you're set. Yeah, I decide I'll go, I'll go that way. Yeah, if there I have you to go. Take a, if I have to take a connection, I'm going to go that way. I, uh, yeah, it's something. It's something. I just, yeah. I just stared into the middle distance for a moment there. But we're not the only ones. See what I'm doing here? See? Yeah, I do. That, I'm getting it. I get, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading what you're laying down. I mean, I, okay. So you're, you're with me? I'm with you. Okay, great. Uh, we're not the only ones having a successful, uh, 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 interesting week. Yeah, I'm, I, Yes, Maureen, that was well said and perfectly set up. 
thank you. Thank, thank for, you, Dan. For that professional segue to I the news portion of the I Says Who I podcast. Did a, I think you I did, did a great job. job. You did a great job, Maureen. I'm proud thank of you. Thank you. Well, yes, Maureen, whatever it was that you said, I agree. And if you'd like a little preview of what the next nine months to, who knows, maybe four years of your life is going to be like, you really can't do much better than the last 24 hours of Donald Trump's life. There we go. First up, Maureen, Monday... That was supposed to be the day that the very first criminal trial of Donald Trump was going to get underway. That would be the New York hush, Stormy Daniels hush money money laundering case. And but, what happened? Well, because we discussed this last last episode, because uh, they received the the prosecutors received documents from the federal government from their own investigation onto this very same stuff. Uh, they received those documents a few weeks ago. There were like 30,000 pages of them or something. And so they, um, both the defense who asked basically for like, Hey, why not we just end this trial since we got these new documents? That seems like sensible thing. Uh, and the prosecutors were like, well, actually we kind of need to read these two. So we might need a little bit of a delay, but we didn't know how long of a delay until this Monday, they held a hearing instead of a trial. That hearing set a new trial date for April 15th, which is actually pretty soon. Yeah. It's just three weeks away. Trump's lawyers, of course, God love them, tried to further delay the case, uh, saying that the DA Bragg's office had intentionally withheld these documents from them in order to make sure that the tri- the trial you know was happening as as late as possible. So then they wanted them to delay it further. Judge Mershon was not having it, saying, quote, you're literally accusing the Manhattan DA's office and the people assigned to this case of engaging in prosecutorial misconduct of misconduct and of trying to make me complicit in it. And you don't have a single citation to support that position, (laughs) which does sound like a typical Trump defense. Yeah. Uh, Throughout their want to delay further or to end the case uh, sooner. And April 15th, Maureen will be the first criminal case of Donald Trump. (sighs) happening trump as you might expect dealt with it well taking it well getting on truth social in all caps saying that the judge should recuse himself he cannot give me a fair trial he demanded that the trial should take place on staten island sure with a new and unbiased judge Mm. ending saying these and this is in all caps these country defying scoundrels and thugs have no case against me witch hunt hmm we're back on the mm. witch hunts. Trials expected to last about six weeks. Six weeks. Jesus. Yeah. So if you're talking April 15th, that means end of May, beginning of June is when that shit will wrap. Christ. Uh, and that means that his first potential conviction will happen well before Election Day. Generally speaking, the Trump team's goal all along has been to delay all of these trials until after Election Day, not only because at least the federal ones, then they believe he will just pardon himself or force you know, the um, Department of Justice to drop the, the trial or whatever, but also because even though all conventional wisdom says that the people that are backing Trump will back him no matter what, even the Trump people seem to be a little bit nervous about the idea that he might be criminally convicted and still running for president. So it was definitely uh, a little bit of bad news for them. Mm. And if that was bad news, yesterday also was the deadline day for Donald Trump to come up with a half billion dollar appeal bond in his New York civil fraud case. Le- Attorney General Letitia James was getting ready to seize property, to freeze uh, assets. There were reports that he was at least considering declaring bankruptcy. There was, you know, generally the sense was this was going to leave him insolvent. Right. Well, 
There was not going to be a way for him to wiggle out of this one, I'm sure, except that that's what happened yet again. Got to lean back for this, Dan. Yesterday, he wiggled out of this one when a New York appeals court decided that he only needed to pay $175 million instead of $454 million. A pretty significant reduction in that appeal bond. It's still a lot of money. It's still, oh, it's still a lot of money. But uh, they gave him 10 more days to get it together. uh, And generally, everyone believes that he will be able to get it together. So he got some bad news in the case of the April 15th trial. He got some good news in the case of having a a half billion dollar appeal bond reduced to $175 million. Uh, And it seemed like that would be enough. Until today, Maureen. I don't know about this. I've been busy. What's what's going on? The Trump Media and Technology Group, that is the company that runs Truth Social, finally finished its merger with a company called Digital World Acquisition Company, which meant that it got to be listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. And today, Mr. was about to be insolvent yesterday and had to beg to get his appeal bond reduced, has added about $4 billion to his own name because the stop has stock has jumped up over 40%. Sure. It's enough money that Bloomberg announced that Trump has re-entered their billionaires list of the 500 world's richest people. Mm. They estimate his net worth now at about $6.5 billion. <sighs> Great. Great. The company, uh, which we've talked about before, continues its its extremely curious business model uh, and success. As the New York Times reports, quote, by most traditional measures, Trump Media's valuation is inordinately high. The company took in just $3.3 million in revenue last year, mm. all from advertising on Truth Social, and recorded a loss of $49 million. Now, Dan, I have a question. Yeah. Now, I don't know shit about business. Mm -hmm. Despite owning one. Yeah. So I know a little bit. Okay, I know a little bit. Yeah. But if you take in 3.3 million Mm -hmm. and you lose 49 million, Mm -hmm. that means that you've lost about, say, $45 million. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So that's, that's a negative. Mm-hmm. That is, in fact, a negative. Yes, I mean it's not it's not completely unheard of in the realm of sure. technology, right? But to... that's also that's also forty nine million, and mm-hmm. not four billion. I guess that's another yes, question that. mark. So, as the the New York Times continues on, that that means that Trump Media's market value is more than a thousand times its estimated annual revenue. And they can they go on to say investors sometimes assign lofty valuations to small money losing companies in, in in anticipation of rapid growth or a belief that other investors will continue to bid up a company's shares for whatever reason, but typically not on this scale. Other social media companies trade at far smaller price to sales ratios than Trump Media. Reddit, which just went on to the Nasdaq, is around ten. So, a thousand versus mm. ten. Mm. Meta, that is the company that runs Facebook, their uh, their price to sales ratio is seven. Snapchat is six. Mm. They go on to say high top high flying tech stocks like the chip makers Nvidia and ARM trade at a price to sales ratio of around twenty five. Mm. So it's weird that there seems to be some questionable stuff happening in those stocks. This feels like some point three quarters to the movie where the writers were, were had to have a turn of fortune for the baddies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That it came right on the heels of uh, yeah. an entire two week window na- media narrative, at least of Donald Trump is about to be broke. Yeah. And now on the same day, yeah, that's like- on the essentially the same day. We're lowering your bill and giving you $4 billion because yeah. you know what? You've worked hard and you deserve it. You deserve it, buddy. 
You deserve it. You did a good job. Yeah. If if there is a company that deserves that kind of a debut, mm. that company is definitely Truth Social. Well, look, I mean, there isn't really a history, Dan, of big media type companies being overseen or bought or sold by absolute fucking billionaire lunatics. That hasn't happened. So mm. um I guess that this is uh this is kind of a first in a lot of ways. Yep. Um yep. they don't they and they've never bought things like that and tank them or you know, no. it's just it's not never at happened. all. No. We're on we're on we're on completely stable and good ground right now for sure. Dan, what's going to happen? <laughs> I don't know, Maureen. I don't what know, do you, but I do know this. What do you know? I do know that if you want to know what the next nine months to maybe four years of our lives are going to feel like, this last oh. 24 hours is telling me that it's going to feel like shit, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> We're not ready, Dan. <laughs> But you know I what? Mean, Maybe this is I am. the wild part, Maureen. If anyone is ready, it's me and you. Dan, I feel like you ever see that scene early on in Game of Thrones where where somebody's fucking their sister? Yes. No, was it Darn? Oh. Yeah, the one, the woman whose mother of dragons. She goes mm -hmm. into her husband's funeral pile and like stays the night in the pyre while the oh, fires okay. around her, and then All just right. emerges in the morning. Yeah. As mother of dragons, because she cannot be burned by fire. Yeah, that's you. I don't. I don't feel like that yet. No, but it's no. definitely why I'm. It's definitely what I'm going for. That show was just way too incesty and rapey for me. That is why I stopped watching it. Yeah, that is I why just I stopped watching it. it. Let me like, tell no. you about a television program, Maureen. I want to hear it. Fantastic. Hit me. Extraordinary. Have you seen this? No. Ah, oh, Maureen Johnson. What? This is a it's a British show, but it seems to be like a British show, but it's on all it's like on Hulu in the US and stuff. It is like a 30 minute show about these like 20 somethings in 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 London. But the premise is that, you know, before the show began, some event happened and everyone got superpowers. Mm -hmm. And you get those superpowers on or around your 18th birthday. And the main character is 25 and her powers have never come. And it is a delight of a show. After watching a whole bunch of very stressful shows, which we have discussed at length, this show is just fantastic. One, is it it's funny? hilarious. Yes, it's a comedy. But it's, you know, it's a it's like a comedy that has poignant moments, but all the characters are great. She lives in this flat with a with like a guy, his power is that he can like loop back on time. Uh, but he's kind of a slacker and doesn't quite know what he's doing with his life. And he's married to this, or not married, he's dating um this woman who her superpower is she can channel dead people. And so she works for a lawyer and like they have to channel dead people to finish contracts and stuff like that. Um, it is just a delight, like the world that they have built and the kind of way that these powers impact the world is really, really wonderful. Um, it's very funny. The music selection on it is really, really good. Um, it's great. You should watch it. It's so right. fun. It is a, is a really a, a joy of a show. Because it sounds like two of my favorite shows. Okay. A little bit. Umbrella Academy. Yeah. And Misfits. Yeah. It's a, so, it is a little like that. The thing that is interesting is like that. Is it's that it's everybody. A, it's everybody. And it's not like a crime fighty show. In fact, right. the like kind of slacker boyfriend, his sort of story arc throughout the first season is that he wants to put together like a vigilante group. And uh, so part of the fun of that is you start to see all of the really strange uh, powers that people have. Like there's one guy who can 3D print with his ass and uh, <laughs> <laughs> another person who his power is he can turn anything into a PDF. Um, <laughs> like anything? Yeah. But people, you like anything. And um yeah, and and in addition to like a lot of people can fly and stuff like that, but um, it is just a it is a real joy of a show. It is, it is I cannot, 
at in in a time where everything is really stressful and Janice and I really needed a non-stressful show to watch, man, it's a good time. There was a character on Misfits whose superpower was that he could control all dairy products. Just mind. <laughs> <laughs> one of one of the characters uh, in this the vigilante group can um, summon fish, like summon, <laughs> but but can't t- can't do anything with them. He can just group, so like he <laughs> interviews for this group and he just stands there for a long time with his hand hand <laughs> shaking. And finally, a fish comes shooting through the window and flops on the ground. And they're like, <laughs> "Can you talk to them?" And one of my favorite things is, uh, and I, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but at one point the, the the kind of slacker dude meets up with this guy again after their vigilante group thing doesn't work out, and the guy's like, "You know what? I'm going. I'm I'm just, I'm going to Florida. I'm going to go swim with the dolphins. Finally, my 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 powers will be good for something." And then the guy just goes, "Dolphins aren't fish, mate," and he looks so sad. <laughs> Anyway, that's my recommendation. I'm so excited to recommend a piece of culture that you haven't seen. Uh, well, New Taskmaster is about to come out. In oh, fact, shit, I almost that's right. I was almost able to buy a ticket to go see the live premiere in New York City last night. Oh my goodness! They did like a in a, like a theater. Yeah, really close to me too. Like I could have walked there. No well, how problem. How did you I just, not get this? Because I was busy buying a security system, and taking oh. a bunch of phone calls. Yeah, so it was it, it was I was doing some other stuff, but. It was really close, and they were all over the city. Like Greg and and Alex were like, oh, taking, wow. and they were taking pictures all over the city. And I was like, "Oh, they're here! They're here!" Oh, they so, so they did a live premiere with Greg and Alex in yeah, the theater. They, yeah, Whoa. you could ask them questions, and yeah. Oh man! So one of the um, former Taskmaster guests is doing a couple of nights of comedy in the U.S. Guz Khan. Who is oh yeah, hilarious! He's one of my favorites. So good. He is uh, playing. He's he's going to be in New York, Maureen Johnson, at I think the City Winery. I know like. where that is. Yeah. Um, but he was also going to be in L.A. And the teen is a big Guz Khan fan, and I was all, dude, dude. he's going to be where you are. Yeah. But so these we'll are all see. positive things, Dan. These are all positive so things. So on the fifteenth, we'll have the Trump trial to look one. Oh, yeah. The heating and air conditioning guy just drove away. All right. You got hot water big, again. Oh big my red gosh. van just drove away. Oh my away. gosh. Okay, hold on. I just need to point something out, Maureen. What? We've been sitting here and I've been noticing that the notes in on my screen keep jutting down a little bit. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's weird. So I have to keep kind of actively adjusting the scroll so that they don't move completely out of my vision. And I'm like, why is this happening? And then I finally scrolled all the way up. And Maureen Johnson, I would I urge you to flip over to the show notes for a second and see what's oh. been happening. <laughs> That's Maureen's what that noise computer was. has just been making a six. <laughs> it was for... going did, 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 and I didn't know what it was. That's what it is. Just I need a, a lot new of computer. sixes. Started six six computer. six, but it's going from there. Oh. Oh, it goes on for a while. It goes on for a long while. <laughs> I really wondered what that noise was. Yeah, I was wondering what was wrong with my computer, that the notes kept joppling down. I need a new computer. This computer, the battery life is now about... Oh, it's doing it again. What is happening? <laughs> I don't know. Your computer is possessed. <laughs> it is. It does seem to be possessed. All right. If I do this, does it do it again? Uh, Yep. Huh. All I did was move between windows. I don't know. Don't know what to tell you there. I don't know what to, I don't know. Uh, we'll computer, just let it keep going. My battery is now, it lasts about 20 minutes unplugged. Yeah, my, my computer it has to be plugged in all the time. I can't not have it plugged in. Maybe, is this the year we get some new computers, Dan? <laughs> Maybe so. New computers for Dan and Maureen. Otherwise, my computer is actually totally fine still, but oh, yeah, the battery no, issue this, is an issue. It's never done this before. That's why I didn't even think about getting a new one because it's like, it's as if it's brand new. I was like, oh, wait, it's actually several years old and that's why the battery is going down. Yeah, then, I, I had the realization the other day that the computer that I still think of my new as my new computer is like five years old now. But Yep, say, Dan, same. Look at us. You know why? It was almost like we went through a worldwide pandemic where we it lost was. a bunch of time. 
If it is, it is sort of like that. First I'm just really enjoying trial. watching you type six forever. I'm not. I... Oh, is it stopping? You stopped. Yeah. Did it I stop? bet you'll start again, though. Yeah, it did stop. I just hit some buttons. Okay. Well, great job. When in doubt, just hit some buttons. You fixed it. I fixed it. Nice work. I'm trying to say that, Dan, we have our first criminal trial on April 15th, tax day. Oh, yeah, that is tax day. Oh, and tax, typically, tax day has not been on the 15th lately. Are we so, getting a Georgia trial? Who knows? Hold on. Now, now I need to know when tax day is. <laughs> oh, it is the 15th this year. Last year, I think it was the 18th. I was very confused by that. Side quest, uh, We don't yet have a date for the Georgia trial. The, the, they're, they have been off on this long side quest about Fannie Willis and uh, uh, a affair that she had or an improper relationship she, that she had with one of the prosecutors. Um, and that seems to sort of be, have, have delayed what is already a very delayed process of getting a date. I would not hold one's breath that we will be getting that trial this year. Do you think he's going to be found guilty in New York? <sighs> I, I, we have discussed this before. The New York case is, weird. is the weakest of all four cases, you know, um, in that it's just sort of like, why isn't this being prosecuted like the very large fraud trial that just happened, right? Like, why is this not fraud in that it's, you know, it's essentially the, the, the crux of it is that these payments to Michael Cohen, which were really payments to Stormy Daniels, uh, were not really classified correctly. And then in order to trump it into something, hey, oh, trump it mm -hmm. into something larger, they are saying, well, if you think about it, these payments were to keep her quiet right at the very tail end of the 2016 election. So these, this was really sort of a, an illegal campaign contribution because it, it um, materially benefited the Trump campaign to not be mired in a sex scandal in October of 2020 or of, of 2019, 16. Whatever year. I don't know <laughs> what years are anymore, Maureen. He didn't have a beard when this started. You should see his beard now. <laughs> it's down to his ass. <laughs> um, and to me, and it seems like to, to folks that I have read, all of that feels a little bit hard to like say this is capital C crime, but um, versus penalties and stuff like that. Well, then can I be the first to say, Dan, that if we uh, these uh, trials get bumped, that we're going to have a crazy 2025. So yeah. and 22. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the crazy's ending anytime soon, Maureen. No, it gets smoothed out after all this. Does it? Yeah, I think it's going great. Smoothed out like when your Boeing plane finally reaches cruising altitude. That kind of smooth. <laughs> Look, this is the reality we're in. We're just going to have to. Improve it to the best of our ability. Yeah. I'm and in. withstand. And we withstand. We appreciate. We improve. <laughs> and occasionally we avoid, but we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, this is, we've, now we've come to Maureen's mindfulness. Oh, here we are. Now. So say, imagine you're on a plane. You're cruising through the sky. Maybe you are right now listening to this. Hello. Now, don't worry, the door is probably not going to blow off. But if it does, take heart. Because if you see that video of the Alaska Airlines when the door blows off, nobody gets sucked immediately out of the plane. Nope. Although some guy's shirt does, apparently, because they were all wearing their seat belts. And so they were there and they were like, ah, but they didn't get stuck. They look remarkably calm, a lot of them. They look really Do you think chill. That, that guy, I've never seen the video. Is he like super ripped? Like this was his whole moment, finally. You dream of it, that your shirt just magically disappears, and there you are. You're ripped underneath. Have, have you ever seen the Beatles movie Help? Yeah, but a long time ago. It's a very, very, very funny movie. But okay. there is a scene where these assassins keep trying to kill the Beatles. Uh -huh. And one of their, they go through a series of weird traps, and it's these short, very funny scenes. And one, they're in the bathroom, and they're just washing their hands. 
and then the assassins take, take control of the hair dryer or like the hand dryer and it just goes crazy and written i think it's paul is like somebody they're just drying their hands and the, the, the dryer just starts sucking all, like sucks paul's shirt right off his body <laughs> then the sinks explode out of the wall and they're like clinging to the and it's like they're flying over and that's it's just funny like the thing that's just like takes your shirt. i feel like i've interrupted your mindfulness moment that's all right 2024 is going to be full of interruptions don't let it get to you. Ride the wave of the interruption. The interruption is part of the discourse. Incorporate the interruption into your monologue. That's right. Achieve flow state through incorporating the interruption and making it a hidden intention. <laughs> that was very impressive. Listen, there's a thing called the oblique strategies, which was made by Brian Eno, which are these like little in- weird instructions that he gave himself to make music. Mm-hmm. And you can flip through them and grab them at random and follow them. And my absolute favorite is one that just says, honor your mistakes as hidden intentions. Yeah. And, and I love it. I buy that. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. All right. So that's, so incorporate the interruption into the reality that you're building. It's already there and part of it. It's not a thought exercise. It's in it now. Don't worry about it. Is that a good, I think that's a good mindfulness moment. I think that was great. Thank you. That's, thank you. Thank yeah. you. No, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Why are these power strips so dusty? I mean, that's not, that's between you and your family. That's between us and God. I mean, truly, what is this stuff, Dan? What is it? I'm going to show you something. Okay. This. Do you see this? Yeah. Oh, it's this is, a complete idiot's guide to the internet. Getting on the internet. We made this. This is a book, a little guidebook I wrote for my parents oh, way back. What? I wrote this for them. Oh, it's like a notebook. Yeah, it's like a binder. And then we made... Oh, then we made a cover. It's like a fake. The quotes wow. on it are like, click, click, and you're online. A four-year-old. Like, send an email. Read up to the minute news. Look stuff up. Wow. That was very thoughtful of you. Yeah, I made it a whole, a whole thing. But this is probably from, I don't know, like 2003. Okay. Oh, boy. This is a... It's amazing how the things that you're grap- grasping and pulling down are right there. Yeah. Let's see. Introduction. How to get online. Online. What to do and where to go. <laughs> Searching the web. Let's do email. Wow. Troubleshooting. What, Did yeah. you just say school shooting? No. Troubleshooting. Oh, okay. It's like, wow. That, that was a weird chapter. Here are some. And I wrote a list of sites you might like. Oh, let's hear them. Weather.com, CNN, yeah. schoolnurse.com. Okay. Sure. National Association of School Nurses. Okay. Columbia EDU, the local paper, uh, so like local sites. Were you Let's, at Columbia at that time? Uh, it would have been near the end. I would have been in yeah. my thesis. I would have been, here's the test I wrote. You made a test? Yeah. All right, let's do this. I want to do this test with you. I don't know. Okay. Your first assignment is to find something hidden for you on the web. Turn on your computer and go online. Go to the following page. Oh, wow. And it's, a, it's a GeoCity site. Wait, you made like a website for them? Yeah. And then it says, on this page, you will find a code word. When you locate the word, call me and tell me what it is. Oh, my God. Maureen Johnson. The, the second one is, I have sent you an email entitled Homework Assignment 2. Reply to it using the reply button. <laughs> Send a note using the email email address provided in this book. Use a new message button. The subject line of this note should read, I am a computer whiz. Oh, my God. The master challenge. This is challenge. amazing. You must find information using the web. I have picked things you could never, ever know, but are not hard to find out. Here are the three questions I asked them. To All right, I'm in. I'm to. in. There is a musical group called the Beastie Boys. They released an album in 1998 with a two-word title. The title of the album is... Hello, blank. What is the second word? Nasty. I didn't even need to look that up. 
What is the scientific name of the Colombian black spider monkey? Wow. All right. And, Colombian. and what year was the Charlie Chaplin film City of Lights made? And then if you pass, there is a prize for you at the end of the book. Oh, I'm excited. I'm ex just wait. Colombian spider monkey. Uh, it is the, the scientific name is Ateles Fuscisepis Referentis. I did a good job. And I said, if you got, if they did all this stuff, they got a prize and there is an yeah, envelope. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'm looking up City Lights movie. Chaplin. Let's see. 31, 1931. Okay. I Here's passed. the prize envelope that okay. was opened. Yeah. Is there still a prize in there? <gasps> it's a little yellow ribbon. That says Computer Whiz. That says Computer Whiz. And it's made out Dude, to that mom. that ribbon is hot. Yeah. That ribbon is sweet. That's like one of those participant ribbons that you get. Yes, but it says school. Computer Whiz. That was I, exciting, we, Maureen. We did a lot to make. I remember this was hard work. I was just like, it's the internet. You can get on it if you want. Yeah, I mean, this whole book is laid out. It's got graphics. It's got jokes in it. Like, it's all, like, we did actual layout on this. That's impressive. Well, you know what else is impressive? That Says Who is made possible by you through your support. Of our Patreon at patreon.com slash says who our Patreon where pretty much every Sunday except this next one you get me and Maureen all over again doing the town watch if you give it the five or ten dollar a month level. Our theme music is performed by Ted Leo. Our logo was designed by Darth. You can contact us at says who podcast on threads or at says who at omfg.town on Mastodon. You can uh, email us at hey, that is H E Y at says who podcast.com. You can join the discussion on Facebook at slash group slash says whovians. Our Facebook group is moderated by Janice Dillard. If you want to join the fan run discord server, you can always go to tinyurl.com slash says who discord spread the word, subscribe, please leave stars and reviews on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or wherever it is that you listen. And you can join us next Wednesday, April 3rd. It's April next Wednesday for our very next episode from Janice's sister's house in Denver, Colorado. I am Dan Sinker. Dan, Maureen did I ever left. tell you? She's not even when, on. Uh, I just looked at the screen, and Maureen is is. You I was were picking up pages, and then you were down on the ground. This is a really well written and funny book. I forget that I'm a writer. When I was bored in certain classes, when I was a kid in middle, like in middle school, I used to yeah. spend the time, and I used to love this. I would be in class writing workbooks for myself okay. with little characters that would teach you. Wow. Like they all had a little, and I've developed a character for this book. He's called Little Oog, and he's a caveman. We just took a picture of Captain Caveman. Okay, yeah. And he's the author of the book. All right. And he, you see him come up and give you tips. Wow. There's like a fake. There's a fake bio for him on the front. Martin, you could have sold this book back in the day. It was a whole like Little Oog says, "Don't panic about these many toolbars. What may seem overwhelming and we're like." We laid everything out so you could just see everything that you need. So like, what era of the web was this? What what web browser were you telling Netscape. them to use? Oh, wow. So this was old, old. Netscape, yeah. I made well. a fake email address for him so you could write to Little Oog if you had questions. Wow. There you go. I, sometimes when I do a thing, to... it's, it's Yeah, you do it. Realize I did all of this for my mom. Yeah, that um, seems like a lot, but I'm very you, thoughtful. The, the best book I ever wrote was a was a like a comedy adventure book that I wrote for my boyfriend. Okay. In, but it it was an actual written book. But all I turned everyone we knew into like fairy tale characters and incorporated real world events. And I wrote a wow. chapter a day, and it was amazing. And then it had at one point a separate it opened up a door into a separate like sitcom mm -hmm. because one of the characters complained that they didn't get like a feature. So like another, like another story opened up in the middle and they got like a little featurette. That wow. was exactly what they want. It was the funniest thing I've ever written, Dan. I you will know, always be, it's that kind of thing. 
All of this just reminds me that I think you might have a pantomime opening soon. It happened. What? How did this? How have you not told us about the pantomime? It happened. It happened. Yep, happened over Hold the weekend. Hold on just a second, Maureen Johnson. We were on this pantomime journey with you. I forgot. From day one, mm-hmm. we're there. We're yep. rooting for you. We're hearing you talk through the outlines. We were there the moment the director fell through, and it suddenly seemed like perhaps you mm-hmm. would be the person that's in doing That was the never going to happen. And now here it is. There's and, a oh you forgot. There's a full video on YouTube, and I Hello. can put that. <laughs> and I can put that in the Facebook group. Yeah, you better. Now the first part, the audio is a little bad, and it gets better. And they move the microphone for the second part. Sure. Um, what makes it funny are like there's a lot of little kids, like they get lost. A horse has to dance for a full two minutes because these little two kids got forgot what they were doing and like never showed up. And then finally they did. There's a lot of that. They forget yeah. stuff and then props get thrown on. And it's pretty funny. Wow. So I will. I, if you can. When it's did a little it hard. happen? Uh, Friday night and Saturday afternoon. Just now? Yeah. Happened oh. like two days ago. Man. It was. It was I saw it. Apparently in person it was laugh out loud funny, but it was because that's little kids dressed as like yeah. detectives and making mistakes, Amazing. and singing really complicated songs that I wrote for them. <laughs> well, now I have that to look forward to. So thank you. So I'll put I'll pop that into the Facebook group for you guys if you want to give it a watch. I need to write an article about it. Do you know anyone that I have to find a place probably in England that would want this article? <laughs> You should definitely write it. Like write it for The Guardian or something. Yeah. I'll see if I can do that because it's pretty funny. And there's that. the photos are great. They're so fucking funny. Dan, well, it has been a whirlwind. Note, I've been riding the wind. It's time for it's you like to a weird wind. time for you ride, to sign off. I'm riding the weird wind, Dan. The weird wind. You know what I mean? hmm I do know what Just you mean. Just incorporate the interruption, ride the weird wind. I love it. We're and all on together on note, this weird. Because I'm telling you what, huh? People. Says Uvia. We're going into April now. Yeah. 2024 has been, it's that quiet, like you're right on the beach before the hurricane goes in and all of a sudden you see the water kind of draw back. <laughs> yeah. We've been watching the water draw back, you guys. Now it's time to hand crank those radios. Because it's uh, go time, show time, blow time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, By the way. Quick shout out to whoever's running Joe Biden's media, because I will say Donald Trump gave himself some weird award this week and he put a big Trump social post. and was like, I am being awarded like the Donald Trump award at the Donald Trump golf course. Yeah. And then the official Biden account took a picture of it and said, great job, Donald. Quite an accomplishment. <laughs> and I was like, it was pretty right. funny. That's pretty funny. It was. That's pretty. That's my man right oh, there. No. Oh, oh man! Logo, we were so close slow, go, blow, go, uh. go. Ah, I'm ready to. I'm ready to reap the wind. You know what I mean? I'm riding it. Ride the wind with me. Okay. And my man's got wind. You know what I'm saying? Oh. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Blow a little towards the shoe. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. Ah, you know what? You know he's with those ice cream cones. It's summertime's coming. He's gonna have those ice cream cones. We'll hear more stories about corn pop <laughs> swimming. Remember when um, he was advised just a few weeks ago to uh, stand there in an ice cream store eating a very large cone of ice cream, explaining how there was going to be a ceasefire in a matter of days in Israel. Mm. That didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. Well, the ice cream part did. Uh, the ice cream part definitely well, that, happened. That happened. The ceasefire part didn't happen. Didn't happen. At the time, it was like, well, this is a poorly advised piece of campaign in deci- poor decision making. Mm. But mm-hmm. now he was with full confidence being like, oh, yeah, it's happening this weekend. Well, it's happening maybe Sunday. Uh, it's prob- Maybe it's happening on Monday. And while slarping his ice cream yeah. down. 
the whole time. Yeah, when time. it doesn't happen, I guess you're like, well, what did you think? Now I was in the middle you just of look like a full on dumbass. I think it, yeah. Look, Dan, ceasefire would have been great. Yeah, it would have been handy. Would have been something. Been nice. yeah. Would have been really. But you know, it was pretty great. That ice cream. I'm going to make ice cream this summer, Dan. Okay. I was gifted for Christmas an ice cream maker and an ice cream yeah. cookbook mm-hmm. full of flavors. Yeah. You come to my house, Dan, I'm going to make yeah. you any flavor you want. Yeah. That There's some great. good flavors in this book. Like they are absolutely bananas flavors. Like they are just, I'll make you guys, you come to my house, I'm going to make you ice I'm going to make you ice cream. Any flavor no. you want. I'm okay. going to make a says Whovian flavor. <gasps> oh. It'll, mist- it'll be full of mistakes. Well, on that note. Eat the mistake. From Janice's sister's house's kitchen in Denver, Colorado, I am Dan Sinker. And from the internet in 1995, I'm Maureen Johnson. And this has been Says Who. I'm a dusty ghost from the area where the power outlets are. Probably hasn't been dusted since that since the nineties. That's a that's original nineteen ninety five dust. Yeah. That's that's vintage shit. You can tell.